Welcome to Refurbishing Solidarity, where our focus is on defragging tech activism together. Thanks for joining us for part five out of our six part series. If you missed part four, you can find the link in the description. It seems one of the ways to really deal with retaliation and to try to make it harder for management to retaliate against people is focusing on solidarity. Would you like to tell us a bit about your project for solidarity onboarding? Yeah, yeah, this this project came out of talking with one of my fellow organizers, um, someone who was on the organizing committee and actually quit after she got a very uh, like strikingly negative um, meeting with HR. Uh, and we were having lunch and talking and she mentioned that she actually had a recording of this meeting with HR that she had. And I was like, oh my God, I'd love to listen to that. And when I listened to this recording of her meeting with HR and her manager, I was shocked because it was a blueprint for the criticism that they gave me in the following months. And they used okay. exact phrases. They used, uh, they, the thing, the thing that management does is they rely on um, existing levers to punish people and most of the time those are societal biases like uh racism or sexism they can use the biases that people already have to like generate criticism against someone so for her they were saying you know hey you're not building trust with your managers you're not open to feedback you um are being aggressive and she asked them to clarify what aggressive meant like all, all of these things they did the exact same thing to me and Mm -hmm. Whenever I was listening to that recording, I was like, oh my God, it's so important for us to share what we really think about these basically gaslighting strategies that management yeah. uses. And when you zoom out and look at the unionizing effort, there were so many phrases that management would use that are classic union busting ideas like, oh, the union will bankrupt the company. Uh, mm -hmm. The union will make us adversarial, you know, you won't have a direct line to management to tell us what you think anymore. All of those things, if you only had the ability to have like 50 organizers say what they think in response, I think it would immediately like immediately show <laughs> how how empty those ideas are from the management side. So. So that, that's how this project was born. It's like, wh what if we had a booklet of all of the major anti-union talking points that we've heard from companies mm. like Kickstarter or Google or Twitter? And what if we had organizers from those companies comment and actually write down why that's like a bullshit <laughs> idea? Um, and yeah, so we created this like little collection of anti-union talking points with the counterpoints of organizers written directly on top of them. And I launched it on Kickstarter, <laughs> which is pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 that was uh, pretty cheeky and fun. Uh, yeah. So how, as a Kickstarter project, how did it do? It was great, it was great. It was, uh, I've launched, I think, four Kickstarter projects and it was the most successful one. I think it raised nice. like, <laughs> yeah, it raised a couple thousand bucks and I was able to, go ahead and make uh, all the zines and ship them out. And I think the most successful part for me was I learned so, like, I, I don't know if you remember, but that, that quote that I gave you from um, Meredith Whitaker, that was something that she wrote in response to one of the union busting uh, statements. And I had never heard anyone say something like, you know, having a voice and having power are different. And yeah. to me, that was so clear. And I had wished that I had heard it a year earlier when I had started the union, you know, started getting involved in the union. And there were so many amazing, thoughtful statements from organizers that I had wished I had known a year before. So yeah, it was a really rewarding, uh, really great project to be a part of. Yeah. Is, is there a way that people can still get one of those kits? Yeah, yeah, actually, so um, I am working with Collective Action in Tech. It's sort of an archive of tech stuff. And we've been talking about putting a digital version of the booklet up so that anyone can like okay. browse through it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, yeah. So then we can try to get a link to that um, when the interview airs then. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And beyond, beyond the kit, it was like, so 
there's a booklet that's part of the kit and then there's also like a pencil that says like you know solidarity forever on it and like <laughs> and uh, some stickers um so it's more like it, you know how you get like a welcome kit from a company that you join that you get like a t-shirt or a sticker or something mm -hmm. like that it's the sort of employee led version of that <laughs> that's like hey okay, wel yeah. welcome to the group yeah yeah yeah. And did you guys give these out to people as they like did card signing, joining the union? No, I mean this was something that I did after I was fired, actually, which oh, made it okay. uh, made it even more of a cheeky project. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it was it was basically what I put my time and energy into after I was fired. Is I was like, okay, I'm gonna put uh, things that I learned about unionizing into this project and get it out there. And Kickstarter is uh, the best way to do that. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I think it's great and inspiring how you are continuing to be part of this fight, how you didn't allow them firing you to just, you know, shut down your voice, but you are continuing to push back. What do you see as more things that you'd like to do in the future as part of your involvement in this battle? Yeah, I, um, I mean, you say that I like, you know, I, I really, I love that you sort of said that I was like keeping my voice uh, out there and not being allowed to be like silenced by the company. But the truth is I just like, I just really enjoyed learning through this entire process. And that's what I couldn't give up. Like I mm -hmm. couldn't, I couldn't give up going to the union meetings and learning the struggles that my fellow organizers were going through because it was so interesting and it's something that all employees and workers face um is this all these struggles of how do you how do you combat management's power and i honestly just want to keep learning like that so i've mm -hmm. i've been part of uh, the tech workers coalition where i can have more conversations like this uh with other tech workers and see what their experiences are like and yeah i don't know what i'm gonna do next but i i just want to keep learning yeah Thanks for joining us for part five out of our six part series. There's one more episode where Clarissa gives some advice to anyone who's engaging in similar efforts at their companies. And for any of the solidarity projects that Clarissa discussed here, if you'd like to find out more details, they are in our description. Join our Patreon to get early access to full interviews and to join our Discord discussions. Please help this series by spreading it and interacting with your algorithms. And remember, a conversation is the first step towards solidarity.